and things like that. So it's often nice to warn your clients just to take their makeup off before they come. Um, so, you know, it's all to do with how you approach somebody at this point. So everything I'm going to do is going to be a little bit more thoughtful around that. So I might just have my hands on for a little while. Okay, now with the face, let's just have, so you can do a lot of stroking around the face without any oil on at all. And what you're going to do is just follow the contours. Nothing, nothing difficult about that. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on me. Thank you. Also, the music that we have, of course, is going to make a big difference. Music, no music, silence. Anyone got a pillow I can put under my bottom because I'm a little low here? Thank you. <laughs> so sitting on the edge of the chair is quite useful. I've only literally got a little bit of oil there. And really, all you're aiming to do is work on the contours of the face. But I'm going to show you a few little things that are quite nice. Do you know the best people to learn facial massage from? <laughs> Indians? Yeah, the, the Indian people are great with facial massage. Midwives. Huh? Midwives. Midwives, that's interesting. I was thinking about baby. baby. Oh, <laughs> the baby massage, yeah. I was thinking of beauty therapists. Aren't they great? So I've learned a lot of the techniques that I use from working with uh, beauty therapists. Beauty therapists have ideas about what you should and shouldn't do around the face. So they believe that you should have a really light touch and they often use that finger because of that. I can't work with that finger very well. So I, and I don't think we worry quite so much about dragging on skin and things like that. So all I've done there is just oiled. And here's a few things I would like to share with you. One is working between the eyebrows. And it actually is quite a firm, I think it's quite a firm touch there, but it's fanning out there. Another little technique where you can do this one. This is a beauty therapy technique. Like that. Mm. You can do that anywhere. What about the temple area? Mm -hmm. What do you think about working in this area? Why is that important? Get a lot of tension. Mm -hmm. Neck and shoulders. Neck and shoulders going yeah, up. Yeah. Neck as well. Why so particularly? Kind of jaw as well. Yeah. Mastication. So. Mastication, absolutely. So what muscles are involved in mastication? Masseter. Masseter. The masseter muscles and? Temporalis. And temporalis. Temporalis. temporalis yeah. So if you get someone to clench the jaw, you will feel it up here. Okay? And very often headaches come because of the tension around here. So really working around here is nice. I would definitely work around the eyebrows. You can either squeeze the eyebrows like that or do pressure points up into the eye sockets. Feel your own now. Okay? And just press gently but firmly along that eye socket there. What you find is there's quite a few little acupressure points along there and pressure points and marmot points and and it's very good to relieve the eye strain. So I usually spend a little bit of time there.
stroking along the cheeks, down, round and out. Top lip, bottom lip, squeezing along the jaw. The masseter muscles, we mentioned those already. Do you remember the homunculus and what the um, ears were like? Big, right? So we're going to work around the ears. Nice mm -hmm. stuff around the ears. Not everybody likes their ears touched. You okay with ears? Yeah, no, I'm fine, yeah. Okay. In Ayurvedic massage, they stick their fingers right in people's ears. <laughs> I don't really like that. But they also work a lot around the ear lobes themselves. So all the way around the ears, behind the ears, if you're going to pull the ears, don't pull them out like that. You can, however, pull them down. And that's a great release for the muscles in face. So, lots of stroking. Lots of stroking up along the forehead. And there's lots of ways you can do that. Basically, anything you think you'd like yourself is quite likely to be appreciated by the other person. Then we're going to work on the scalp. And this is where I say to you that actually quite a deep shampooing motion is quite, it's very releasing before you do the lighter stuff. Notice the body movement. We were talking earlier, weren't we, Sam, about even the slightest strokes that you do has the accompanying body use, which is why I'm sitting on the edge of the chair. You could easily move the head to one side and work more. Stroking through the hair. Anybody like their hair stroked? Find it relaxing. And <laughs> <laughs> the back of the neck. I'm going to show you something else as well, which is one of the things that Draw uses, and I, I actually have incorporated <coughs> this into my work as well. What he uses is a system of pressure. What we know is when you compress something, it helps the release of that area. Yes, you already know that from some of the work we've already done. So one of the things you can use that with is the forehead and neck. So I'm literally supporting under the neck there. That's all I'm doing. The area that's going to really relax is the neck. But how I'm going to achieve that is by applying pressure onto the forehead. Now, usually this is about 20 seconds, and it's a very, very gradual increase of pressure. You're not lifting that hand, are you? Just that hand is just the forehead. The hand under the neck is just supporting. It's doing nothing as I increase pressure on the head. And we're going to ask Claire in a little while how that feels. Hang on, Claire, because it's not until I've let go that you're going to feel it. So I've increased up to about 20 seconds, and now what I'm going to do is literally begin to take that off just as slowly. And then we're going to ask her how that felt. That feels right. <laughs> weird. That does, that, it's hey, quite, it's weird. quite, there gets a point where you actually feel it really release. Yeah, so it's very releasing. Weird and releasing. I'm going to show you one other thing. I'm going to show you one other thing, which is actually a point. It's a, called a marma point. It's right at the top of the crown of the head there. It's called the adipati. And I generally finish this kind of massage with a connection on that point. And again, I'm going to ask for a minute what that feels like. Good. 
Mm. Yeah, no, that's good, that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. It brings you, it makes you focus mm -hmm. up there. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of stroking. <coughs> also, pulling of the hair is really, really useful. Do you want to try it on your own hair? <laughs> now, not one little strand. You have to actually get onto the scalp, you know, really... Again, it's a bit like the compression, it's very releasing. Alright? Now, how do you feel after that? Yeah. Quite calm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've already done the hands, haven't we? Anything you yeah. want me to go over with the hands? Anything you want me to go over? The palm movements. Palm movements. So do you remember I did that um, one where we link the fingers? You can always try that. And stretch the palm of the hand. What would this one depend upon? <laughs> what would this one depend upon? The size of your hand. The size of my hand in relation to the size of her hand. Okay? So if you've got somebody with very big hands and you've only got little hands, you can just link on the last, on the thumb and the finger. Either way. And then the fingers underneath are pressing up under the palm so it stretches it while you work in the middle. You don't have to do any of that. You can just work in the middle. <laughs> so if you forget that, that's absolutely fine. All right? It doesn't matter what you do. It's just learning different techniques that work in different situations. And then one of the other things I showed you is stripping between the metacarpals. Do you remember? We did this on the feet as well. So finger underneath, thumb on top, and I'm literally going between the bones here, the metacarpals. And that's nice. That's very releasing as well. All around the knuckles. And then each finger, you're going to take each finger and kind of wiggle it and rotate and move off it. Right. Yeah. Just looking at Carly, excuse me, I think we've all probably got a lot of oxytocin flying around in the room. <laughs> Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the hands, actually. I think it's quite important. And I, it's the kind of thing that I will say to you when we look at abdominal muscle, uh, massage as well. If you approach somebody's hand and you don't know them well, what do you think is going to be less threatening for them? Which way up do you think is going to be less threatening? Palm. Palm. palm down. Yeah, palm, palm down. down. If you just quickly turn their hands over, it's, it's just, it's a more open position for somebody, okay? And it's even those kinds of things that can make a big difference to whether somebody trusts you or not. So if you start with somebody palm down, and you begin to work with their hands palm down, and then when you do turn the palm the other way, you turn it over with some awareness of that. All of those things make a big difference. Actually, particularly with the elderly. I do a lot of hand massage with the elderly seated. And, you know, if you've got someone's hands out in front of you, just to suddenly turn them over it can be a little bit challenging. You don't know them. Okay. That's the hands. Anything else you need on the hands? We've done kind of, we, I know we did wrist stuff, didn't we? Yeah, I know we did. We did. Feet. I've still got my socks on. She's still got her socks on. <laughs> what do you remember about the feet? Nothing. You remember it's nothing? To the hands, isn't it? huh? It's very similar it's to very the hands. very similar to the hands. I showed you a few things with the feet. Chocolate break. 
Chocolate breaking always comes in, doesn't it? But I don't know whether you remember a few of the rotational things I showed you. One hand under, just around the ankle, the other on top, on, well, it's actually around the toe joint. And that's just rotating the ankle. Anything you do that we've talked about stretching, it feels good, isn't it? Doesn't it? So we can stretch down, we can stretch up. We can stretch one way, we can stretch all the movements that the foot does. And then you're really going to do the same sort of thing as before. So I'm not going to do it all over again, but in between the metatarsals and working the toes. What happens when somebody's ticklish? What do we do? Keep the pressure firm. Strong hold. Strong hold, keep the pressure firm. Too slow. Slower might help, but usually, usually, people get really ticklish around the toes. So if you're fiddling a bit around the toes, don't do that. If they start feeling ticklish, give them more of a firm hold with both hands. And you might even need to leave the toes for a little while until they've got over that um, ticklishness. This is another um, reflexology technique. It's literally just either the hand either side of the foot and then just twisting backwards and forwards. And you can do that all the way along and you can take your hands either side of the ankle. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. And wiggle the ankle about too. Using the fist underneath. And then, do you know what? I probably do quite a lot of stroking if I'm really trying to slow someone down. Are we all asleep yet? <laughs> Are we? Okay. Anything else you need from me? Do you think you can cope with that? What's important with the face? Shut that. What's important with the face? Too much 